Welcome back, everyone. We find ourselves once again in the depths of Castle Drang Lake, right on our way to heading through and killing the boss and continuing on to the Shrine of Amana. I've already opened these doors with the key to the King's Passage, and now it's time for a quick fight with these strange stone horse-headed knights. Now, I could kill them while they're not yet awake, but if you do that, then you miss out on the chance for their drops, and they do have some very nice drops. Luckily, they stagger very easily, which means you can just hit them once as they're coming in. Oh! That is one of their more dangerous attacks, because you can't quite preempt that. If you're attempting to fight them at far range like that, they're gonna come in and clip you one for quite a bit of damage. As you saw, they dropped the Llewellyn set, which is an incredibly strong defensive set for its weight, but it gives you absolutely no poise, so it is a bit of a trade-off. It's incredibly light, looks really cool, lots of great fashion souls there, but it just lacks any sort of poise, so it's something you really have to consider when you're choosing whether or not to use it. There we go. It's a little bit strange, but I'll take it. Oh, got greedy, went for the extra strength swing, and took a little bit of damage back. Ah, I hate his shield, because it doesn't just deflect spells, it just deflects any sort of collision. Which, admittedly, is how shields probably should work, but... Ah, uh, it's, it's not how the game has its mechanics work, and so when it changes up how the game works just for a specific fight. Not a fan. We trade hits again, but I can Estus just right here. He takes a lot of damage very easily, especially on New Game. It's a bit more difficult in New Game Plus, especially because that's when he's more likely to be summoning invaders from other worlds, but so long as you can get pretty consistent damage, maybe consider picking up a thrust weapon and slapping on the old Leo ring because he locks himself into attack animations a lot for the extra counter damage but aside from that he's pretty easy to just avoid his attacks are very slow and lumbering the one issue is if he ever starts to really combo you you can have a bit of difficulties with that that's a really nice chest up there it's one of the only places in the game you can get soul bolt in fact if I remember correctly, it's the only place you can get Soul Bolt, meaning you're limited to one copy per playthrough. Every New Game Plus cycle is only one other copy of Soul Bolt because it's in that metal chest, as well as having the ascetic and whatever else was in there. I've already forgotten, to be honest. All I remember is that it has the ascetic and Soul Bolt. Maybe some human effigies? Who can say? come on in here. I, I just don't really get why this is here. Considering it's Green Blossom, I think that it's the usual FromSoft way of introducing you to a mechanic. They're showing you there's an item there. There's no other way to reach it, quite obviously. So the player chooses to walk up and attack it, breaks down, and hey, looky there, you've got a Green Blossom. And they'll be using that mechanic later in order to hide away the uh, Milfanito dress, as well as the Life Ring Plus 2. Which admittedly has become obsolete now that we have the Life Ring Plus 3, but that's how the game works out. I'm going to equip my bow real quick, just because I don't want to lean over the edge too far and quite possibly fall to my death and demise. It's happened to me before, and so now I'm always especially wary of that item. It's a free Twinkling Titanite, Knight, so you would be remiss to pass it by. Here is some um, spice for you. It's in a wooden chest, so you can actually uh, use an ascetic to farm it up if you're willing to increase the <laughs> bonfire intensity of this area. Certainly not something I recommend, but, you know... The Shrine of Amana isn't too difficult once you learn how to avoid the casters, so keep that in mind. It's really just how you want to deal with it. This is going to be the tricky part. It's how I deal with these guys. I'm... Oh. I was hoping that 
I could get the rolling attack to preempt him because the rolling attack is the largest range attack that the bastard sword has and so it has the most opportunity for a preemptive strike but sadly he moved slightly to the side and it ended up swinging right past him I think the great axe would take them out in one hit I'll have to check with the next enemy but I do want to come over here and grab this free twinkling tight knight because you know why not also a flame butterfly which is useful a little bit later in the uh, level when you have to head out to grab the last Estus Flash Shard as well as the Sunlight Blade Miracle that they give you for free rather than the one that you can buy from Strayed. Something like that, grab this. Hello there, Crimson Water. It's probably never gonna find any use on this character to be honest. She has a lot of dialogues that you can skip through, and the only important one is that she will give you a smooth and silky stone for listening to her ramble on. Or at least that's how I interpret it. <laughs> that's not quite how the interaction goes, but if you really care, you can just pause it as I'm skipping through and check it out. It's just a bit of lore. Oh, maybe if I actually hit... Yeah, there we go. With any enemy that inflicts bleed, I am always very tentative about getting even a glancing hit because bleed can stack up quite... Oh, dear. I regret everything. Okay. You never, ever want to aggro multiple of these arch drakes at once, and you especially don't want to let them live once you have. But I made a mistake... And, oh, you raised your shield? That's not fair. Let's try that again. Okay. And I get some nice drafts for it. They're mason gloves. They're robes. And a twinkling tight knight. That, come to think of it, that one may have actually just been sitting on the ground. I can't quite recall. Anyways, I kind of borked that encounter by aggroing all three. You can actually aggro the first one on his lonesome and then face the last two, but it worked out, so I'm not going to complain too poorly. Everything that works out in the end's okay in my book. Oh, I didn't have the stamina, and it looks like that just does less damage overall, so I'm not going to be using that one again. Come on and grab this. What is it exactly? Uh, it's just a dragon charm. It's nice. I mean, I'm not going to complain about having an extra dragon charm, but nothing to write home about honestly they end up just stacking up like I've already got nine and later in the game I'll have quite a good deal more yeah I thought that this would have a better moveset for dealing with these guys and turns out I was right at least while they're on the same level as me I'm not quite sure about it in the water but it looks like and that's honestly the crux of having a multi-weapon build like this is switching out which weapon you're using based on your circumstance, which enemies you're facing, what exactly you're looking for. For Faros here, what we're looking for is do I need to stagger the enemy or am I looking to do just as much damage as possible? If it's the former, or correction, am I looking to stagger the enemy or deal massive amounts of damage in a single swing, then I use the Lion Great Axe, whereas if I'm just looking to get the best DPS or quick hit rate as possible, then I'll be using the Bastard Sword. Sometimes that doesn't quite hold true because in certain instances the Bastard Sword will actually outdamage the Lion Great Axe, but generally speaking the Lion Great Axe is going to yield higher damage numbers than the Bastard Sword here. Just casually walk around all these spell casts like it's not even a thing. Can the sprint attack kill in one shot? It cannot. And I don't follow that up properly or roll away. Ouch. No matter. Come on over here and grab this fun little helix halberd. Oh, and a human effigy for my troubles. I'm lovely. 
put that down and Estus myself on up because I took a few hits back there. But this little Faros contraption, honestly, I should just be activating every single one of those possible, especially because at this point I have 25. I mean, I did get a lot of those via the actual Faros PvP that I still haven't managed to work out. Editing is a lot more complicated than I was led to believe, but it, it will be coming up eventually, rest assured. It's still on the way, it's still in the works. But, considering my loadout hasn't changed much, it should still be very relevant. It's just a matter of stats being slightly different, so... You're not going to be missing out on much, even if I release it uh, in the near future. As opposed to when it was that I actually completed most of the fighting. You do want to kill this guy... Oh, dear. I forgot that his grab attack gives him that special damage reduction that some attacks have. <laughs> Wrong direction to roll in. Come on. Lock yourself up. Thank you kindly. Mm, there we go. Some nice damage. Oh. Oh dear. I'm not sure what happened there, but suffice it to say I messed up horribly. Luckily I have a bonfire nearby. And I can rush right back into the fray, but yeah, that was not how that encounter should have been going. There we go. Can I get a one-handed strong attack to kill these guys? That would be very helpful. Yes, that means when I'm carrying the torch out to the final Estus Flash Shard, I can still deal with them while one-handed. Come on through. The two-handed strong attack is really nice and kills it in one hit. Now the dragon charms really start piling up now that I'm in areas where they drop fairly regularly. You can actually see the SS Flash Shard all the way out there along the... Oh! Okay. Was not expecting that, gonna be honest. It's fairly rare to see invasions in new game just the regular new game cycle but they do happen it is a feature so gonna have my ring of life protection on just in case don't want anything too bad happening to me looks like he's coming right on in so I'm gonna duck right on out he wants range combat I can apply ooh did not mean to come forward for that Oh, he just lets me combo him. Lovely. Roll that, roll that. Oh, meant for the backstab. Ooh! That was not good. We're both on fairly equal health, and I get the strong attack for the kill. Whew! I thought we were going to trade lives there, but I managed to squeeze it in just in time. That was... That was nerve-wracking. Not going to lie. My pulse shot up in that last hit because I knew we were both locked into our attacks. Grab that. And now I can go pick up my souls as normal. And get my bonus souls again. Whenever I'm bothered by PvP, I always want to make sure that I don't lose anything, even if I die. I have that life ring just for that purpose. Oh, did not mean to do that. There we go. Ooh. I keep I keep getting overzealous and greedy and I need to stop that. Piercing attacks, thrust attacks, whatever do an incredible amount of damage versus these big fatsos. So, if you have a weapon like that, you will absolutely shred them. Especially if you have a good counter rating, since oftentimes you're hitting them while they're already attacking. Uh, that was weird. But I have no such attacks unless I'm going to be cheesing him with my bow, which isn't really what I want to be doing here because I only have the fire arrows, and he's actually in water at the moment, so he's already taking reduced damage. 
it's just one of those trade-offs that you have but now we're gonna head on down that line of pillars there in order to pick up my extra bit of loot you basically have to kill the ogre beforehand elsewise he'll come up behind you and just do horrible horrible things to you and that is not at all what you want now I'm finally in range of the casters down there so they're gonna be impeding my progress slightly oh that didn't kill why not the problem with this is that you can't roll and you have no shield because if you roll your torch goes out and if you're having a torch you basically can't have a shield unless you want to equip one in your right hand and without a torch good luck seeing where the path begins and ends probably gonna fall off into the drink if you try this without it unless you're being especially slow and paying especially good attention or just have the route memorized really well either way the torch is basically mandatory and kinda of forces you to play with just your right hand and no blocks no rolls no nothing that's one of the reasons I dislike the torch mechanic is it forces you into a playstyle that isn't your own with certain rings or spells or items you have ways of playing the games still using your own playstyle that just simply isn't the case with the torch mechanic things like the uh, what you call it? Sunlight Maggot or Cast Light, which actually made a return appearance. Oh, the invader opened the doors for me. Oh, hello. How nice of him. Anyways, I'm done with this. Now I just want my fastest attack possible. Still worth it to take the hit in order to kill him. Get this ready. Uh, I thought that backstab frames would give me the invulnerability I needed, but they didn't quite trigger fast enough. They are a bit delayed, which is totally fair, but still, it hurts. Just keep on strafing, and you can sidle your way on up. Nice little drop there. Honestly, I should equip a spell parry shield, just so that I don't have to keep looking backwards. But here we are one last pair of these walls and this guy another one of these ogres to fight but he has no leashing problems so you can get him to lock himself into this repeating cycle much easier sadly if he gets caught in the wall section like this you may need to walk around but it's worth it if you want to be playing smart play safe not getting hit whatsoever and there you have it. And he's even nice and knocks the way out of this for me. Got my singer's dress and my life ring plus two. That's all the important loot in this area. Now I can just head on to these last two archdrakes, last two casters, and the healer who's supporting the archdrakes. Even though that priestess aggro's first, you want to come over and kill this one because killing her isn't going to aggro the archdrakes whereas killing this one right here who's still casting at me is going to aggro the archdrakes if I do it in melee which I'm going to see just getting close enough to attack her is the trigger whack 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 as long as you can keep them staggered you're golden there's nothing they can do back and you can just head right on through after making short work of them if, however, you're using a weapon that cannot stagger them, you don't want to fight them head on like that. Your best bet is to draw them out, use range attacks, try and get behind one of them to uh, snag a backstab, maybe even parry them if you're if you have the gall. But honestly, fighting them head on is only a good idea if you have the sort of stagger capacity that I have with this great sword here. Weapons like spears can also do great, great things halberds especially because you can just turtle up behind a shield while you're staggering them and most halberds have the poise damage necessary to keep them at bay so it's it is definitely a time where you want to consider switching up your weapon to a stand-in especially if you've been through both of the DLCs and have certain options for it options that don't need 
upgrading as much, or even just options to have that come pre-upgraded, like the Partisan or Scythe. I am gonna retag the bonfire because I messed up that encounter. The first thing you need to do if you're not gonna waste waste ranged attacks is come up and kill the big guy. Otherwise, his cloud of smoke is big enough that you can't reach him in melee combat without taking at least some of the uh, corrosion effect. And I absolutely hate corrosion effects, so I want to deal with that as little as possible. Just not even all, if if I can. Come right on through here. This area is kind of nice because there's just a lot to focus on. There's a bunch of the lizard men hiding in the ground. There's three casters spewing their load at you all at once. And soon enough, we're going to see the final trick that's up the sleeve here, which is the kindler. Strange kindler, I believe. Luckily, all these guys still let you take them on while one-shotting these priestesses. I actually, considering we were just invaded, I don't think Kindler is going to make an appearance. I think that's what's going to happen, at least. I'm not entirely certain one way or another. I keep taking those hits, but it's worth it to clear the path. S to set on up, and now I just have the little lizard men to deal with, and they're not really a threat so long as you're paying attention to the fireflies and just the water in general. Oh, nope. Kindler's here. Don't know why he took so long. It could be that there's just a certain uh, areas in the level that trigger his invasion, or it could be some thing that I just am not familiar with, but he kind of aggroed a little bit strange. Just approach him calmly and you'll be able to stagger him out of whatever spells he uses. Like that. Oh. I can knock him off the edge too, that works for me. Before I grab that, I want to head back and grab the item that's along this ledge here. There we have it. Green Blossom and Large Proud Night Soul. That last item right there, which I believe is the Red Iron Twin Blade. Am I... Am I right? No, just Petrified Dragon Bone. Maybe that one was the Red Iron Twin Blade. I'm, I'm honestly not paying attention to the drops. Rarely do I actually take the time to look at what I picked up. It's just, it's in the world. I want it. I need it. I'm avaricious. I'm going to pick it up no matter what. And that's how I play this game. That's why I always go with the Covetous Silver Serpent Ring. I just want as much souls as possible. I want it all. I'm greedy. What can I say? I'm trying to do the little trick where if you roll after opening the door you can head through quicker but it's not working out for me there. You also want to tag that diseased, weird, illusory, pseudo milfinito girl there. I'm not really sure what she represents but eh, it's part of the game and you get rewards for doing it. That is a rare attack. He almost never uses that. And as such, I was kind of caught off guard. I got a little confused when he was opening up, because usually he just does this. A quick two-hit combo that allows you to punish him like there's no tomorrow, just by standing back slightly. But, yeah. Sometimes he pulls out weird moves, and he does actually have a fairly nice repertoire. I can get all five hits of my stamina bar. Ah. I managed to roll out of the way enough to not take the stagger damage, but I still took the hit, which is always one of those weird cusp areas. There we go. Swing, swing. I think this is only going to be a four hit. Nope, I get the last hit, which means I can contest him on when he pops out this time rather than waiting for him to swing. So it was definitely worthwhile for me to get that last little chip. Demon of Song. Recently on Reddit, I heard someone... Well, not heard. There's no actual talking. But I read someone trying to claim that the demons of 
that demon in Dark Souls 1 had a very specific definition, which is true, but that the definition was they were creatures born of chaos, uh, a lot of which perverted by the Witch of Isolith when she tried to create the Bed of Chaos. And while that's partially true, it doesn't do justice to the intricacy of the lore there. The title Demon has been used from Dark Souls 1 to describe anything that has been warped from its original form for whatever reason. The Titanite Demons that can be found all across Drang Lake, not Drang Lake, but uh, Lordran. Oh, beautiful, 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 beautiful. Get that agility all the way up to 105, and I can just leave it there for the rest of the game. But uh, it's demon is a term for... Oh, wait. No, no, I have the full Estus. But demon's a term for anything that has been perverted from its original form. And a lot of the demons in Dark Souls 1 were demons, chaos demons, that came from when... What's her face? The Witch of Isolith tried to recreate the first flame. But as I was saying, the demon Titanite, the Titanite demons that prowled Lordran, actually came from the death of the original Smith God. It's a little bit obscure, but it's uh, explained right there on the uh, demon Titanite description. And from that, you can immediately see that, no, not everything is attached to the bed of chaos. It's not all forces of chaos. Uh, also, the crow demons that inhabit the painted world, these were followers of Velka whose forms were perverted into strange crow-like beings. And here in Dark Souls 2, we have three demons that I can call to mind. There's the smelter demon, the demon of song, and the covetous demon. Look at all three in turn. The smelter demon, he was a it was a mass of iron that was given a soul and thus became a living entity of fire and iron. That's definitely a big change from its origins, its flux, its perversion of nature. That's what a demon is. Look at the covetous demon. It was a poor soul who longed for that which it could not have and eventually that longing twisted its form into the horrible job of the hut we see before us when we actually head through Harvest Valley and Huntsman's Cops. Not Huntsman's Cops, but the Earth and Peak. And finally, you've got the Demon of Song, who you, which used to be some strange being, but actually became corrupted when it developed a taste for human flesh. It wasn't until that point that it was a demon, but once it had been so thoroughly changed, it became a demon because it was so perverted from its original form. It was something new, something strange, something that nature did not intend. And while, yes, chaos fits into that very nicely, chaos isn't the only way that happens. I just really wanted to bring that up because I hate it when people uh, look at the lore and start, you know, making explanations that sort of work, but only if you look at certain parts of the lore. If you actually take it as a whole, then you can piece together the truth, as at least I would call it. And by doing that, you can come up with much better explanations and have a more deeper connection, more deeper, but a deeper connection with the actual story of the game itself. I am going to talk to Agdane real quick. I believe that he doesn't have anything necessary for my character, but I at least want to pick up warmth for when I introduce pyromancy. I'm not going to be using any spells or maybe some dark arrows. Yeah, I'm not going to use these souls for anything too important anytime soon, so some dark arrows might be nice, especially because I am going to be building into dark in the final lengths of the game. So yeah, that's what I'm going to go with. Get him out of the way. You're next, don't worry. There we go. What? What? <laughs> I did a guard break critical off a of parry. <laughs> I'm going to have to review the footage there, but 
something went wrong. Not necessarily like horribly wrong, but something was not right about that. <laughs> that was that was strange to say the least. That's that's not what's supposed to happen. I guarantee it. I got a parry, and then I picked him back up to get the guard break, get, and still only did two ticks of damage. That was weird. That was very weird. I don't know what the game thought was happening there, but it's not what actually happened. Gonna skip on down here. This gives me 20,000 souls, a soul vessel, and lights up this whole crypt for me. As well as taking me directly to the bonfire, as opposed to having to knock my way there through a bunch of tombstones. Bingo. And you can see the fire catching light in the crypt over here. These massive statues. Really cool. They look sort of like the Ladia with their hoods. Maybe pyromancers. Not really sure what they are meant to represent. But they're very cool looking. Add a lot to the atmosphere of the level if you actually come down and light up that statue. Not sure what they are or what they're there for, but again, really cool. Add to the whole candle lit, really fire burning brazier type lighting of the level. I'm going to clear through this first little area and cut, cut it right before I start to head on and take on all the signs a little bit later on. Uh, lost my connection to Steam. I was surprised that the uh, invasion earlier was not as laggy as I was expecting it to be because, like I've said, my connection is usually pretty piss poor, but as you clearly just saw, but I do have a way of just hooking myself right up to the router in order to make the internet a little bit better, which is what I did for the PvP video that's going to be coming out, but I can't do that all the time, so it's certainly not going to be a regular occasion. Plank, plank. You always want to make sure you kill these statues just because they make sure that these Lady uh, Pyromancer Sorcerers, whatever, won't be sneaking up on you as you clear through. They do a lot of damage with their spells and can have a ridiculously gnarly three hit combo that's just going to shut you down where you stand if you actually take it all to the face. So be sh absolutely sure you're playing it safe and not leaving yourself open to attacks from behind. If you have a sweeping weapon, it's very nice for taking them out while you're destroying their statue, so that's something you want to keep in mind. If you have a medium to heavy weapon, you can actually kill their statues in three hits if you're two-handing as opposed to four, but rarely is that going to be efficient because while you kill it in three hits, your hits take a lot longer to come out, so it's really just a matter of balancing how you're dealing with that. Nameless Usurper is going to come and try and do horrible things to me, but she's slow, so I have the chance to take out these two before coming back to deal with her. She's just becoming coming out now. Oh. Oh, come on. She has incredibly quick attacks, but she staggers ridiculously easy as well because she's just wearing the Saint set. She Oh, I didn't even know that guy was there. I mean, there's like no time when you would need to near that wall. So I've just never come across this phantom in the entire time of playing the games. Are there any others? I thought there, were, there was only the one and then the two in there. That's really weird. I didn't know he existed. You learn something new every day, folks. But that allows me to come right at... Oh, I don't think I grabbed Avalon. I think I killed the phantoms, but didn't grab Avalon. And because it's a very intricate contraption, I think it might be nice to have for the Pharos build. Not sure if I'd ever use it, but it's a bit of technology and a bit of loot, so I'll grab it. Back in the day, it used to be ridiculously strong if you made it mundane and then two-handed. Not two-handed, but dual-wielded it. Nowadays, it just doesn't really do too hot, no matter how you use it. It's a nice finish finisher, just for an offhand, but 
kind of lackluster at this point. Uh, the delay on their attacks is really hard to get a handle on. If you automatically just dodge away the moment that you are able, sometimes they'll clip you with that overhead, as you see. Okay, this is one of my most difficult areas in the entire game, just because there's so many Ladia pyromancer sorcerers coming at you all at the same time, that it can be a very difficult encounter. Your best bet is just to... Oh dear, and I'm already almost dead. Yep, yeah, and I'm dead. I was going to say your best bet is to just destroy as many of these statues on your first clear as you can, and then come back. Uh, once you've destroyed th three or four, just run out and come back when there's going to be less of them coming at you, but it turns out I couldn't even pull that off because I did get caught with their really nasty three-hit combo that I was worried about, and I got diddled, so I'm going to have to go all the way back around. If you actually manage to escape that encounter the first time, you can come back across the shortcut, but I failed to unlock that, so I am going to have to head down this chamber again. Luckily, I've already dealt with everything important, so I can just come right on through to these two and face them once again. They take very paltry damage through their shields, but you basically have to hit them once or twice to sort of wake them up. Oh, come on, that was out of range. The worst thing is that you can't even parry them. You just have to avoid their attacks or just take the damage. Maybe block, but... I haven't used a shield for blocking in ages, which I suppose is not necessarily a good thing. Like, you don't want to be bragging about being pigeonholed into a playstyle, but that's just how I play, to be honest. Uh, there we go. I'm going to have to kill the statue first, but I think I can get my souls without too much of an issue. There we go. There's one... Oh, can I stop him? No, I can't. Whenever the un... Oh, dear. No, 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 no. That flame pillar is just destructive as all get-go. There we go. Oh, come on. There we go. That's three. I'm going to be a little bit... Oh. A little bit greedy here. And see if I can destroy the fourth one that's in the room at large. But do as I say, not as I do. This is honestly a stupid idea. I should just get out with the progress I've already made and activate the shortcut and hopefully I can make it out I do okay wonderful that means there's only one more statue back there and I have the shortcut open which is the really important part I could go back and tag the bonfire to no, I didn't want to do that I just wanted the sprinting attack tag the bonfire to banish all the ghosts that are already in play but I'm a bit cocky, so I'm not going to play it smart. I'm just going to run right in. There's one last statue. Oh, come on. I got the sprinting attack. You should have gotten hit. Oh, and I eat another one of those three-hit combos. I just need to kill him. Just kill him, roll over, and immediately heal on up. Goodness. Oh, Jesus. This is just not turning out well. The problem is that you have to fight them in that really constricting hallway. Maybe if I get the overhead. Oh my god. Yeah, no, this this was a poor idea. I'm committed now. I've basically got to go through with it just for my own pride at this point. Oh, stop it. Please. One last one. There we go. Took me ten Estes to manage this whole encounter, but I did it. I managed it. Good lord, it took forever, and I really didn't play it smart at all, but that's the luxury of Endgame, is that you are allowed to not play it smart every now and again. Your weapons and your Estus count will carry you through if you just want to mash your face against the encounter and run right back to the bonfire afterwards. 
have another Ferris contraption here to get another copy of Great Lightning Spear and Olinford Staff. I, I still don't understand why they have Olinford Staff in the game. It's basically a weaker version of the Sunset Staff that also has an incredibly high uh, intelligence requirement as opposed to the Sunset Staff which has ridiculously low intelligence and faith requirements. It's just a very strange thing that they did there. Not sure why it's here. It has lower scaling as well in addition to the just lower damages altogether. And if I remember correctly, even its cast speed's kind of mediocre. I can check in just a moment, but I think it's only 120. Oh, come on. It looked like a undead was sneaking up behind me, but it may not have been the case. Oh, goodness, only 105 cast speed. Yeah, it really just is a very poor catalyst in general. It has BA scaling with int and dark, whereas the Sunset Staff has AS scaling with int and dark. So it's just, I don't know. It's a bit of lore, but that's really all it is. Okay. Now, I'm going to cut it before I head too far in. I've made a lot of progress. I'm right before Zellstat, and that's going to be it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.